the first march we are going to play together is pretty well known in band circles, and it is a march that the Marine Band plays all the time, especially when we are actually marching. It's called The Thunderer, and it was composed in 1889 when Sousa was still our director. This is a really enjoyable march to play for almost every section of the band because of the different parts of the march, and they each have their own distinct character. The drummers also get to play a special beat with a cool stick click part that has become a traditional way the Marine Band plays this particular march. This was also said to be Mrs. Souza's absolute favorite march of all of the more than 130 of them that her husband composed. So let's get to it. I assume by this point everybody is warmed up and ready to play. So please pull up your music to the Thunderer. The Marine Band in concert is standing by to join you. You're gonna hear four clicks and then off we go together. Are you ready? Here we go. This is John Philip Sousa's The Thunderer. That was fantastic. That applause is for you too. You know, even though I'm in a room conducting by myself right now, which I admit is pretty strange for me, I could feel the energy from homes all across America and beyond. I never get tired of conducting that march, and to know that so many of you just played that together is something very special. So now I think we are ready for the main attraction of today's worldwide play along. You know, Sousa often told the story of how he was inspired to write The Stars and Stripes Forever. It was the year 1896, and he was returning from Europe on a ship after he had received word that a friend of his had suddenly died. As he paced back and forth on the deck of that ship, an imaginary band was playing in his mind, sounding out the melodies that have now become so famous, and he wrote it all down in a giant wave of inspiration. He said that he completed the entire march on Christmas Day. And the music was also inspired by homesickness. You know, Sousa had traveled all over the world, and when he was away from America, 
He said that he could envision the American flag flying above the White House or waving over the famous parade grounds right here at Marine Barracks, and that he was so proud of his country and he could not wait to get back under its grand flag. Even the construction of the music to the Stars and Stripes Forever itself gives a nod to our country. Sousa thought of the three different main melodies in the final section of the march as representing the three parts of the nation, as Sousa saw it during his lifetime. The north part of the country is represented by the broad lyrical melody first introduced by the clarinets in the trio. That iconic piccolo solo that we all know represents the south part of our country. And the bold counter melody in the trombones that you hear at the very end of the march stands for the wide open expanse of the Old West. The Stars and Stripes Forever became our national march in 1986, and the Marine Band plays this piece more than any other except for perhaps our national anthem. And we are very proud to perform it all with you today. <laughs> 